Yeah, career in film unfolds. And uh, wow, here on Community Matters, I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. And the, uh, the beautiful young woman is uh, Ken Austin. We know her, knew her as Kendra, but she's Ken now. And, and she's in a, in a film career. And she used to be one of our interns um, here in Think Tech Hawaii, uh, well, a couple, three years ago. And, and it's always wonderful to see her. Hi, Ken. Hello. Hi, Jay. It's been great to see you again. <laughs> So let's talk about uh, you know your schooling so far. You're in Georgia. You've been studying film for the past few years. Uh, how yes. has it been? For my first, before I get to the political, <laughs> I'm going to ask you how film school has been. Film school has been a very, a very, uh, one of the best experiences of my uh, life. But it's also been like the most stressful <laughs> times of my life as well. But I wouldn't uh, go back. It's been a great experience. And I gained a lot going to film school. What was your favorite part of it? I mean, what course really was, um, you know, the best creative experience for you? Um, my favorite course? I would probably have to say um, it was a production course by one of my professors. And it was commercials and music videos. Because that was right after we came back on campus, and it was very challenging because I haven't really been behind a camera in like a year, and I didn't have a lot of experience prior to my school locking down. <laughs> so that it was, it really like throwing me into a deep end, and it was scary, but I I did well and I did it well, and you know I surprised myself with how much. Uh, Skills I gained in a short period of time. So I'll say that production class was pretty. Okay. Good. This is in Atlanta, was it? Yes, Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> All right. So I, I hope you're doing the right thing politically in Atlanta because if, <laughs> if you don't vote for the right people, you, you know, uh, Atlanta is in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, Atlanta's in an interesting part of history right now because it's kind of a swing state. So it's been interesting kind of seeing it evolve into this swing state and maybe it will be blue. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, how did you, how did you like, how did you like Atlanta and Georgia? Um, you know, I mean, I was there well, many years ago and I really thought it was a great city. Um, how, how was it to live in Atlanta over the time of your school and your film school? Um, you know, transitioning from Honolulu, like Oahu, it was, like it's much slower paced in Hawaii, laid back. And then, you know, I, I jump into Atlanta and it's very busy, extremely busy, lots of traffic, it's a lot more fast paced. You know, it, it can kind of either get lost in the crowd or you uh, try to keep up with everybody. So I think it was adjusting to the fast paced environment again um, of Atlanta. Atlanta is very interesting city both historically politically and culturally because it's evolved so quickly in the past 10 15 years and with the film industry coming it's really exploded so it's been very interesting and exciting to see atlanta grow into like this film you know a prominent mm -hmm. film filmmaking location yeah that's interesting i i wouldn't have thought that maybe i haven't kept up but atlanta has become a a, a filmmaking center is that right Yes, a lot of uh, productions from LA are coming down and they're filming. Do a lot of filming. It's very regular to see. You know, the, the, the store on the corner is you see in the Marvel film. Like, oh, I recognize that place because they were just filming there. <laughs> so it's kind of surreal. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what, what, you know, what kind of um, frame of mind did uh, your experience with Think Tech put you into? Did, did it help you make the decision to go to film school? Did it help you in film school? Did it help you, you know, deal with the challenges of film school? Um, I think working with Think Tech, one helped me learn quickly to be on my feet, which was something I truly needed. It's like quintessential in film school is thinking on your feet, thinking in a fast paced environment. And so since we were doing so many shows, you know, at my internship in a day, I think 
that experience was what I need to go into a film set or a television studio. And that did prepare me to um, go to film school. Yeah, I mean, we had, you know, we have, we had a, a small studio and we had uh, studio equipment. You've probably been dealing with movie equipment now with those 50, 60, $70,000 yeah. cameras and all, you know, the fancy lighting. I mean, it must have been a bit of a change of pace for you. You know what? Surprisingly, I, when I, uh, I remember the camera, some of the cameras we used on set, and that was part, uh, partially what we were using in our, especially television studio set at school. I was like, oh, I remember this. <laughs> <laughs> so it was pleasant, it's a pleasant surprise to see uh, so, similar uh, things. But why, in general, did you go to film school? I mean, how do you see the industry unfolding, uh, to use that term, unfolding for you uh, in this country now? How do you see the possibility of a career now? And uh, let, me, let me digress for a moment to tell you that my niece uh, went into film. She went to uh, uh, film school in New York City. Uh, she went to South by Southwest and got her feet wet there. And now she's a, a producer for for uh, series series films on on cable, and you know it's really quite something. Um, but how do you how did you see the industry? Did you see these opportunities uh, opening up for you? How did you see the career at the time you entered film school? Um, I think that was kind of part of it. I, I you know growing up, it was I wanted to be in a film. In in the film industry and I knew that, but it was, I was living in Alabama. So I was like, how is this really gonna happen? And um, it took a lot of learning. It took a lot of experience to kind of make that jump finally after my undergrad to uh, Atlanta. Um, for me, it was never, I knew at five years old that I would be a filmmaker. I just, you know, unfortunately, I just didn't really see a lot of people who look like me to think that was a realistic thing. <laughs> so it took me a while to uh, really push myself to want to go into this industry and you know, kind of be the change that I want to see. Yeah, so how, how do you see the film, the film school or film career unfolding for yourself now? Um, what what kind of a career are you looking at? Are you looking at uh, television, looking at, at film? Are you looking at, um, um, you know, documentaries or other kinds of film? Um, are you looking at being a, a, a member of the, of the crew, of a producer, director? Uh, what, what do you have in your mind going forward? Um, I think uh, once I entered my film school and I started writing more, I realized I had a big, a bit of a knack for a comedy, black comedy specifically. When you say so, black comedy, you mean a, you, you mean an African American comedy or a, <laughs> or a dark comedy? A dark comedy. Uh, okay. I love dark comedies. Um, so that was something that I really kind of honed in on as my time in film in my film school grew and continue. Uh, so that's something I foresee. Um, for my career to be a writer director, particularly in film. Um, I'm not so sure about television. I, you know, I take any opportunity that comes my way, but I, I do see myself directing features and writing features. You know, my, my wife was at her computer this morning and uh, she had a headset on so she couldn't hear me um, just as well, I suppose. And um, she was cracking up. I said, you know, I, I told her to take the headset off. What are you cracking up at? What is really so funny? Mm -hmm. She says, Mel Brooks, um, Mel Brooks and Zero Mustel. Uh, you're too young for this. <laughs> but they're on YouTube. Everything is on YouTube. Mm -hmm. If you want to see old fashioned comedy, go on YouTube. It's all there. You don't have to yes. pay for it or anything. And anyway, she was cracking up at, uh, at Mel Brooks. And I'm saying, you know, there's, there's still a place for classic comedy. Uh, the comedy store is open. But what's the difference between Mel Brooks and, and Black comedy? What's the difference? I would say, <laughs> you know, Mel Brooks, is, to me, I think he is like a, a Black a black comedic director and writer. I don't think there is a, a difference. I think he 
paved that way for that, <laughs> for that type of comedy. And yeah. I know you talk about, I do love Mel Brooks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I can, there's so many things that he has done, you know, live in my mind and memory and in all of our minds and memories that he's, he's had an effect on American culture because yes. of the crazy, zany, dark things that he's done. You know? Yes, Mel Brooks is uh, probably a big inspiration of mine. I do love his type of writing and uh, his direction in film. Yeah, let's talk about writing for a minute. You know, part of every filmmaker, uh, whatever job you have in filmmaking is to write, appreciate the language. If you're not writing, you're editing. And if you're not writing and editing, you're directing. And it's all around, you know, the intellectual property that's written down somewhere. Um, what did you learn in film school about writing? How do you feel about writing today? Writing is kind of like, uh, to me, writing is like the foundation for everything in, in a production, you know, film, TV or whatever. Um, in feature films, you know, the screenwriter doesn't have as much of a control as, as they would in television. Um, director has a lot more control when it comes to uh, features and writing and so forth, but they can change entire script around. The screenwriter doesn't really have much of a say when it comes to feature writing. Um, I find that writing is very, it's very, very important to have a solid story and solid characters. And, you know, you can have okay directing, you could have okay even acting, but if the writing is really good, it can really carry a story. And when the writing is bad, you know, you got to have a really strong director, really strong actors to bring it forth because it's, you know, but good yeah. writing is really hard to, it's really hard to get a bad film with really good, we have a really good story happening. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, when, uh, when we watch television in my house and, and in the time of COVID, it's become more important. We really care. We always cared about movies, but we care a lot more about them now. <laughs> and we can usually we usually tell the quality of a movie in the first like two minutes. Uh, we can we can tell even from the credits or from the opening scenes, and and we judge our evaluation. We make our evaluation of a given movie on 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 the writing. It's always on the writing. And I, I turn to my wife and say, "This one is good. Listen." Listen to the dialogue. You'll see what I mean. Or this one is really bad. It has bad dialogue and they're stumbling and bumbling and they can't express themselves. Um, so you know, I agree with you 100%. Uh, it's, it's a matter of getting that intellectual property down on paper. So Cleary, um, are you writing? Um, are, are you the person who would write? Or are you the person who would appreciate the writing? Are you the person who edits the writing? Uh, are you the person who directs the writing? Where do you fit in all of that? Or maybe it's all of the above, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel that I am a writer director. I do want to write and direct what I write. Um, you know, I want to be in that privileged position to do that. Obviously, in some directors or famous writer directors, sometimes they screenwrite, sometimes they direct something they never uh, wrote, I never touched. So. But I think for me, writer director is very important for me going throughout my career, is to be both of those. Yeah, and you have to have a certain state of mind, a certain worldview, a certain way of, of looking at the reality around you to deliver to an audience that's waiting to be educated, waiting to be titillated, waiting to be entertained, or somehow drawn in emotionally to your story. Um, so you have to see it through their eyes, right? You know, what about production values? You know, at Think Tech, we care a lot about production values. And, and we have the impediment of doing that, you know, through Zoom uh, rather than a studio and rather than, you know, sending our stuff out in a way that uh, it's high resolution. Uh, we struggle to make decent resolution using uh, broadband and, and, and Zoom. So query, what have you learned about production values? And I mean, lighting? I mean, sound, I mean, camera angles, uh, framing, all that. You must be loaded with that stuff right now. Huh? <laughs> yes, uh, production value is extremely important. When you don't have good lighting, 
good sound, especially, you know, it, it takes the audience out of the story and they, they may not understand why exactly they're not into it, but if it's the, those are small details that production value adds that has to be there. Because if you, you someone is, you can't hear something or they're too dark, you can't see their face, you know, it really pulls the audience out of the story when those basic things are not um, aligned and well done. So production value is very important to visually <laughs> and audibly for people to hear, you know, and be yeah. entertained. Yeah, so, so you say story, and um, you know, story is a very broad term, um, especially in movies today. Um, one of the kinds of movies that I like is, um, you know, a documentary uh, or a docudrama, which, uh, you know, can be a, a more interesting than a documentary, I'm sorry. Um, or, you know, an outdoors movie, an environment movie, uh, uh, a movie with a, with a cause, uh, a movie um, which, um, you know, exposes a, an, activist, um, um, an activist, you know, cause in the world. Um, I, are, where is your head these days? Are you pointing toward documentary, docudramas, environmental movies and the like, or are you pointing toward other stories, you know? Fiction stories, and strictly entertainment movies, Marvel comics, <laughs> high production value movies uh, like that. Where, where, which way are you pointing? Uh, you know, I really, I'm really into a lot of independent films right now, and they're kind of like are very character driven. Uh, I do like documentaries, even though it's not something I foresee myself pursuing. Um, entertainment wise, I do enjoy. Uh, independent movies. I actually really love thrillers <laughs> and comedies, of course, uh -huh. and period pieces. Those are like the main three uh, really capture my interest as far as like what I want to write and also what I tend to lean into in my own inter entertainment. You know, a lot of people when they finish school, whether it's high school or college or whatever, um, they, 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 they turn around and say, hmm, I'm finished. I did all my, my education now. I'm not, I'm not, I don't like school that much. I didn't like the homework. I, you know, I don't like working at home. So I, I'm, you know, I'm not going to do that anymore. But the fact is that in our, in our world, in our culture, you are exposed to media every day. And media has a, an educational impact on people. I mean, I'm just take the political side. How do I learn what's going on in the world? Well, I watch, I watch the news and the news educates me about what's real. And sometimes it educates me with information and sometimes with misinformation, but I am being, I'm getting my graduate degree, if you will, uh, from the news every day and whatever I watch on television. I mean, if I read papers, that's fine, but a lot of people don't and, and they watch the news. And so what you do, what you will do uh, in the future is you will have an effect on public opinion, on the thinking that people do. Uh, don't you agree? And do you accept that responsibility? Because it is a responsibility. Of course, you know, I think, with, you know, as a storyteller, uh, it's kind of part of when you're creating a story, like what do you necessarily want to say to the world? Like, why are you writing? Why are you directing this? Why are you part of this production to bring this? very expensive project <laughs> to the world. What are you trying to say? And I really enjoy, I think the best, the best films do have something to say. Um, they don't necessarily beat you over the head with it, but they do have a profound theme to it. And I, I do enjoy that. And I, I hope that my work does that as well. Yeah, oh, for sure. And, and I mean, um, my own view is you happen to be in the right place at the right time because of many, many factors, but COVID is one of them. Um, the development of the, of the media, of film especially, is another one of them. More movies being made by more people from more points of view, uh, more places in the world. I mean, uh, if, you, if you just check Netflix, uh, and there are movies on Netflix from every country in Europe, in every language. Um, uh, from all over Africa, Latin America, and Asia, there are movies coming in, and they're perfectly watchable. I always wonder, by the way, whether it's American producers and directors 
who help those guys out making movies that appear, uh, you know, entertaining in the in the American market or the global market. But it seems to me, and see if you agree, I'm asking, uh, that that movie making, filmmaking has become a global enterprise. There are no barriers geographically or culturally. Am I right? Oh no, um, you know, every country has now, especially you know, has wanted to partake and create their own sorts of films from since policy film has began. Um, I think one of the best things with streaming platforms is that, you know, Americans especially get to see other perspectives from different filmmakers from of, of other cultures. I think that was, that was one thing that was lacking a lot, um, that the average viewer, American viewer just doesn't get uh, a more wide variety of film. It's everything a little bit American centric, um, but now with streaming platforms, it's not so much anymore. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. I mean, you know, it, uh, in, in the U.S., um, you sit there on your sofa with your junk food and, and you watch your stuff on a, on a hundred inch television. But in many places in the world, um, they watch these movies, same movies on their, on their smartphones because um, that's all they have. But it's the same movies. So you know the platform for movies, movies that you might make, much greater now than it was even even five or ten years ago, and the number of people who can watch it is in the billions. So you can affect public opinion everywhere. You can entertain, you know, people everywhere, um, whether they have a hundred inch television or nothing at all. They can see what you're doing, which just changes your way of looking at it. Right? You're not just speaking to the guy with the big television. You're speaking to the guy with the smartphone who is could be anywhere, right? That this, uh, especially now with very streaming services, social media, it's really expanded avenues where more filmmakers can enter the industry where it was much more tight and very hard. It was still hard, but it was very uh it was very narrow and not a lot of people of different uh, cultures, you know, ethnicities, whatever, could really enter into these fields. But now since we have Netflix, Hulu, HBO, so many other streaming networks and social media itself, YouTube, it's much more accessible for filmmakers to you know, create a career through these uh, avenues. So here you are in Atlanta, which, which for you is the center of the universe right now, right now, this moment. Maybe not for long, but right now. And uh, you wake up one morning and you're done with your degree. Um, all your work has been accepted and, and, um, and you're ready to step out. And you're ready to get a job, you know, find your way into the, um, into the film industry uh, in any capacity that, you know, appeals to you. And this is creative industry. Um, there are huge creative possibilities. So when you wake up on that given morning, maybe it's today or tomorrow, um, what are you going to do? Where are you going to go? Where are you going to look? What are your criteria? Your What, what are your requirements? Uh, for me uh, right now, I know of guidance from my uh, former professors. It looks like that for me, my journey will probably begin in Los Angeles uh, to get into the step into the film industry. Um, Atlanta, for what I want to do and want to pursue, Atlanta doesn't necessarily fit um, currently into my uh, journey, my film journey. So I look forward to you know, getting a job, going to Los Angeles and uh, pursuing my dream. Okay, what does that look like? Um, you're gonna want, what do you want, a million, a million a year to start? What do you want? <laughs> let's start small we start small then we go big right we go up from there yeah so uh where, where would you go so here i i put you uh, in i don't know wherever hollywood i put you in hollywood you're standing on the street corner you're saying to yourself ken what do i do now i put my left foot out my right foot out uh how do you get a job in this industry it's an old word of mouth uh, do, you, do you circle ads in the newspaper I mean, truly, it's, truly, it is uh, for either word of mouth or you can get into a production assistant job or writer assistants or any sort of assistant, low level, entry level job is kind of where I have my eyes at. 
and it's a network. Networking is really more important than anything else, no matter what you have in your reel, what films you created before. It truly is about who you know. And you know, I do have some people in the industry that I have talked to and connected with. So I'm not fully barren, but uh, yeah, it's all about networking, truly, in the film industry. Did you say real? You have a real? I do have a real. Uh, well, I have technically have a real. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell everybody what a real is? Tell the people what a real is. Mm, uh, so a real is just the, uh, depending on what you are, like a writer's reel or director's reel or a cinematographer, the reel just pretty much is a showcase of all your work you know, or your best work that you want to show to clients, to studio executives, to, you know, show that this is, this is all I can present. This is my talent. And that's kind of like a resume for filmmakers, pretty much. Yeah. Is what it really is. Yeah. By the way, you know, when you were with Think Tech and, you know, when we saw you in the studio every day, um, you were very, I hope you don't mind me saying this, you were a very appealing, relatable personality. And you are now. Hey, you, you're you're great on screen. You're you you're exuding confidence and exuding relatability. May I say? So my question is: Would you ever, Ken? Would you ever consider being on the action side of the camera? <laughs> you know, it's so funny. That's how I started it all. Like my love for my love for film started as being an actor. Um, so I've had. People ask me, like, oh, you know, did you get an acting? Have you acted before? I was like, that's really where it started. <laughs> so I thought about it and I would love to, uh, I would love to enter back to acting, actually. It, it's been like a passion of mine, but I've been putting to the wayside, but I would love to enter acting again. Well, you'll be associated with all those people. Who knows where the road goes? You know, you say journey, it's not necessarily a straight line, is it? <laughs> No, no, and that's my journey won't be either. You know, there's a lot of a lot of winding in it. Yeah. So if you look back now, you know, here you are at an inflection point historically in your life. You have the film school under under your belt. You're, you're ready to, you know, go out, try try your skills, um, and uh, who knows where that goes. I mean, um, uh, it's, as in the case of my my niece, you know. It has really gone to tremendous places. Um, so when you look back at your time in Think Tech in our studio there, which was actually a long time ago for us and a long time ago for you, I wonder if you have any advice for us uh, after all your experience in film school and your you know, way of looking at the world now. Uh, what, what would that advice be? What do we need to do? <laughs> I'm asking for some, <laughs> I want some consulting, you know? <laughs> no, it's fine. No, 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 I have no advice. It's perfectly fine. Yeah. I, I love you guys' uh, set up. I love what you guys, you, you work, how everything is set up. I think it's very sufficient. I think the way you transition to Zoom and is able to continue to show, I think it's a really great way of adapting to the market. That's all what film is about, it's constantly adapting. And think tech, think tech has adapted well. Okay, well, you gotta talk us up in Hollywood, okay? And, <laughs> and when you get, when you get you know, organized in Hollywood and somebody says to you, uh, we need to find a good location, um, you know, you could suggest that they, they pick Hawaii, Honolulu, or any part of Hawaii uh, as a good location. And, and then you can come, come out here and produce and direct in Hawaii. And, and then you could stop by and say hi. And yes. I'm, wa I'm waiting for that, Ken. I'm waiting. I know. I have to come back to Hawaii. I told, I told Carol this. I need to come back and see you all. I miss you all so much in Hawaii. <laughs> and we miss you. And I wish you well in all particulars and all regards. And and this is only one stop along the way. I want to. I want to know more as you go forward. You you can run, but you can't hide, Kent. We want to talk <laughs> to you. We want to track your career. Okay. We are, yes. we are together in this matter, and we are not letting you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Jay. I love you all. You guys have been great. Thank you, Ken. I look forward to our next show together. Aloha. Yes.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.